This is a Zoototal production. Hello surveyors, this is going to be our fourth practice video for chapter four. Here we're going to uh, practice with naming covalent compounds. All right, so with covalent compounds, we actually have to specify the number of atoms that are in the formula, um, especially if they deviate from one, if it's more than one. Um, a lot of times we don't have to worry about um, uh, the first uh, atom. If it's only one, we don't have to specify the number one. It's understood. But uh, do recall, like, in stuff when we're looking at numbering, you know, you've got one is, is mono, right, in a name. Two is di. Three is tri. Four is tetra. And five is penta. And it keeps going hexa, hepta. It just keeps going up, all right? So, um... But I think, I think Penta will grab all of, oh, there is a hexa, sorry, so six, hexa, all right. So when we look here, uh, it, we're given formulas and it wants to give us a name. So this is xenon, all right, and there's only one of them. So you don't have to put the mono for that because it's the first element listed. So you don't have to put mon, mono xenon, you don't have to do that. But with the chlorine here, you do have two of them. So you do have to put die in front of not chlorine but chloride right so the same thing happens here that we did with ionic naming where we drop the, the ending off and we put ide right and then here we have NH3 now even though N is listed first hydrogen has to go first in the naming because when you think about electronegativity hydrogen is less electronegative so it should actually be uh, right if you look at it like that that's the order in which you're going to have to write the name. Okay, so H3N. So there's three of them, so we have to use tri. So it would be tri hydrogen, right? Nitride. Now you guys know it as ammonia, but possibly, but that's ammonia, all right? But this is the, the naming convention we use, okay? Ammonia is a common name. All right, here we have BF3. Um, so for this one, the boron is less electronegative, so it would go first. And remember, you there's only one of them. It's the first thing we write, so we don't have to write monoboron. But for the fluorine here, we have three of them, so we do have to put trifluoride as the name. All right, here we've got two nitrogens for oxygens. So because we had the nitrogen is less electronegative, so it goes first in the name. So we are going to have to put this as di nitrogen, All right? And then with four oxygens, four is tetra, so it would be tetroxide. Okay. Um, you notice I didn't put tetra oxide. I put tet tetroxide. All right. Um, a lot of times we do tend to avoid. Um, double vowels next to each other, so that's why. Okay. Um, next, we have a car one carbon, four bromines. Carbon is less electronegative, so you will write carbon. And in this case, it's uh, there's four of them again, so that would be tetrabromide. Okay. So yet again, I put the A for this one because the next letter was a B, so it's not two vowels right next to each other. All right, um, here we have dihydrogen monoxide. So there's two H's and there's one oxygen. So that would be H2O, right? Dihydrogen monoxide, AKA water. All right, next we have diarsenic pentoxide. So this is two arsenics, all right? And so hang on, just to make sure I don't get them confused, I always have to go and look because there's, okay, it's AS, okay, arsenic is AS, okay, if I can look at the periodic table, I can tell you what the symbol is, <laughs> all right, so, uh, so there's the diarsenic, and then you have pentoxide, so that would be, there's five oxygens, so uh, it should be AS2O5, all right, now we have tetraphosphorus hexoxide, so this would be six oxygens, and then this would be four phosphori, phosphoruses. I'm going to do it like octopi, you know, so phosphori. All right, so it, would, it should be P4O6. 
Next we have iodine dioxide. So this is one, one iodide, one iodine, and then dioxide is two, so it would be two oxygen. So it should be IO2. Not IOU, because I don't owe you nothing. All right, next up we have disulfur de deca. Dexa? It's supposed to be deca. That's a, that's a typo. It's supposed to be C. Sorry. Disulfur deca fluoride. I think, I think Word autocorrected it for some reason. All right. Disulfur deca fluoride. So this would be di is two. So there's two sulfurs. And then fluorides with deca means there's 10. So it would be F10. Oh, that's a lot. So S2F10. Like so. All right. Well, um, this one's not as hard because it doesn't, since it actually gives you the numbers, you don't have to like do any kind of cross multiplying, figure out how many of everything there is. The name pretty much tells you. So that's one of the benefits of, uh, of covalent compounds and their naming. Uh, anyway, hopefully this uh, helps alleviate some concerns if you had any. Uh, but until next time, I'll stay weird. You should too.